continuing with Mark 4 from verse 21 to 25. He said to them, Do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on a stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Consider carefully what you hear, he continued. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you and even more. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken from him. So there's two kind of thoughts in there. The first one is not concealing this thing that you found, this light. If you've got a light, you don't hide it in the bowl. You, you put it where people can see it. And that's kind of talking about our faith in God. And I want to say to you that that happens whether you intend it or not in a couple of ways. If you're on a social network, if you're part of Facebook or Twitter, then the messages, the statuses you leave, the kind of things you post, the things you like, those are your light on a hill. Those are things that you are saying to people. If people know that you're a Christian, if you tick the Christian box or on the religion, you've got follower of Jesus, whatever it is, like if there's something on your page stating that you're a Christian, then everything you post and like and link to actually builds on that statement. And a lot of us don't think of that. We kind of disconnect the, between the two. So I can be a Christian, but I can have a link to my prostitute name or um, some dodgy website or whatever it is. Something that just goes against kind of maybe just even posts on materialism, whatever it is. Like I can have posts on my page that don't kind of fall in line with the values that I've chosen. As a follower of Jesus, I've chosen to value people over things. I've chosen to value looking after the least of these. I've chosen to value loving people, um, lifting people up, not mocking or being rude to people, things like that. And so I need to make sure that in my status, in my tweets, um, in stuff I put on my webpage, whatever it is, that I'm, I'm, I'm writing and sharing stuff that falls in line with what I believe. And so whether you intend it or not, the way you live, the way you speak to people, the way your attitude to your parents or your work colleagues, um, whether everything is above board or are you, are you cheating, are you downloading things illegally, all of those make a statement about another statement you've made as a follower of Christ. And what it's saying is if you're a follower of Christ, don't be embarrassed. I know it's hard in, in many cases today because people have done so much negative stuff in the, in the name of Christian. Um, and so a lot of people... Myself, personally, I try to be identified as a follower of Jesus as opposed to a Christian because Christian just means so much stuff and it will get to a point where follower of Jesus means so much stuff and then you have to come up with something else. I just like follower of Jesus because it is an active thing. I'm somebody who's trying to follow Jesus in my day-to-day -day life. But because I do that, it means that every public statement, every kind of thing I stick on Facebook or whatever, I need to be aware that that is somehow building up or breaking down the reputation of Jesus, or at least my reputation as a follower of Him. And I think it's really important that those things line up. I think for a lot of people, they don't. You look on their page and the way they speak to ex-boyfriends, girlfriends, and you go, wow, there's just no love here. Or the way they spend their money or spend their time. Um, and so we need to be really careful about that. Is the light that we're holding up something that is truly reflective of what we say we believe? And then the second part of the passage says, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you and even more. And Bono would probably refer to that as kind of Christian karma. Um, whatever you give out is, is going to come back to you. And I think there's a sense of that in terms of faithfulness. I've, I've experienced that with God, that if you are faithful in small things, He'll put you in charge of big things. It doesn't necessarily always work out like that. Sometimes, kind of like the Psalms, we look at evil men that are doing really well, prospering, and we go, God, how come... Can they prosper and I have served you so faithfully and I'm not prospering, whatever it is. But but there is a sense that I've experienced of, of being faithful in the small stuff. If it's being faithful in speaking to 10 people, suddenly there's an audience of 100 people and you're faithful with that and there's an audience of 1,000 people or in a task or with a company or whatever, just that your your character and your experience just creates opportunities for you. Um, but also in a sense of the negative thing, if, if you are negative to people, if you hurt people, if you gossip about people, if you slander people, that, that will come back and, and bite you. Um, again, it's an example of that light that we're shining, but, but it also kind of creates a negativity that will, will grow up and feed and, and come up and come back and, and kind of bite you in the butt. So number one, we need to be holding up a light. We need to make sure that light is consistent with who Jesus is 
And the second thing, just being aware that with the measure we use, it's going to be measured back to us. Treat people as you want to treat, as you want them to treat you. And I think that's really important. Just like Jesus moves away from the whole eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth thing. Like treat somebody as you would want to be treated. We all want grace and mercy and forgiveness. And so if we can remember that at the moment when somebody's wronged us, just how much we want grace and mercy and love, then it really makes dealing with conflict so much easier. And it really makes giving out grace and mercy and love and forgiveness so much easier. That's something I've discovered recently. Just just remembering, wait a second, if I was that person, even if I'd screwed up totally, I would want to be treated well. I would want to be treated better than what I deserve. So maybe that's something to think of. Maybe somebody's wronged you recently. How do you treat them? Are you are you giving them a measure that you would like to receive if you if you were in their shoes?